Hello and welcome to another reading vlog. Um, this one is going to be a series specific reading vlog. I'm planning to read the Bare Knuckle Backer Bastard series. Um, if you haven't heard already, uh, my hands are shaking. Hold on. Um, I am part of a book club with one of my best friends on booktube, Crystal from Crystal's Bookish Life. And in it's called the Rake Appreciation Society. This was Crystal's kind of like brainchild. And um, I'm so excited because we have a lot of historical romance book clubs uh, happening um, in the new year. And I'm just so excited about it. There's room for all of them to happen. And it makes me so excited. But this one specifically, I'm planning to read the Bare Knuckle Back of Sturds for two reasons. Number one, in February, our Rake Appreciation Society will be reading the... Um, scoundrels and something in scoundrel series trilogy and i've only read the rules of the scoundrels so far by sarah mclean and so i want to read for sure the bare knuckle bastards as well as i may try to read her like numbers trilogy as well but i have heard such great things about this and since we are going to get to interview sarah and chat with her i want to have read all of her stuff by then i really admire sarah as a person as well as an author i really love the rules of scoundrels series i thought it's just she builds such a beautiful series and so um even though i'm kind of like jumping around in her world i do know that there's connective characters in her series and stuff like that and I had tried The Wicked and the Wallflower previously, but I've really discovered that I love historical romances on audio, particularly Sarah McLean. She has fantastic narrators. And so I just purchased these. I have the physical form and the trilogy. And so I don't know how quickly I'm planning to read through them. I thought it could be something fun to do over, you know, the next couple of weeks. I mean, maybe I'll binge them all in just a week. But if not, I have a little bit of traveling coming up for the holidays. So I love to have a good audio on it. And I'm just so excited to finally read this trilogy. I have bought them all like they've come out, but I haven't read them yet because I just love Sarah so much as a person and from her like podcast and it has brought me so many great books into my life and I just, the way that her and Jen break down a book is something that really interests me and it's something that I really aspire to do is to have that you know, honest balance between what is entertaining and then on what a book is trying to say. And I just really appreciate when you can have both. Like, you can just enjoy a book to enjoy it. And then there's the next level where you enjoy the book and it has something crazy and great to tell you. So, anyway, I just got started with it. I love the narrator, Justine Airy. Um, she also did um, Chase's book from... Um, never judge a lady by her cover previous and I know that she has done like the subsequent books by her so I'm very excited to um I think she also did the scoundrel series too because the okay the rules of scoundrels was the second series and then the the something in scoundrels see they're very I bet it says it inside this book so I can stop mumbling the scandal and scoundrel trilogy I think is also done by her and yeah. So anyway, just getting started with this. I have read the beginning of this book twice before, but I'm re-listening to it because it's on audio. Um, I know that we, all of us hate um, the one Duke, and I know that he's in the third book, and that gets me really excited. And so anyway, I'm here for it. I figured I would blog, vlog the experience. I don't know how long I'm planning to stretch it out, but I just know that... Um, I particularly know my friend Crystal will love knowing my thoughts as I go, and I know some of the rest of you. I hope that this will drum up excitement for our readathon, our 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 like read along that we're doing in February. And I can't believe we're planning stuff for February. It's crazy. So, I am getting, I am editing together my end of the year favorites video. So I am going to be listening to the book while I do that. So should be a good time hey guys so i realized i hadn't filmed a clip yet from which i know i showed what the desk looked like in one but not you know where i'm at with everything 
So I only have a one bedroom apartment, but it was finally like time to switch it up because I was just getting sick of wear of like seeing the same stuff all the time. And since I will be working from home at least for another six months, according to what they tell me, um, I figured it was time to play a little shuffleboard. But anyway, another uh, clip. I have made significant progress as I knew that I would. So I'm actually this far into Wicked in the Wallflower and I thought it was time to chat about it a little bit. Of course, I do have my food cooking, so I'm gonna take you over here because my toast is like done. I just made a lean cuisine lasagna because I actually really like lean cuisine because I feel like um, they taste the best of some of the like quote unquote healthier meals. And by healthy, I mean not too bad for being lazy as hell. Like I know they're not actually healthy, but that's how the cookie crumbles around here. But anyway, we get in the wallflower. I'm really liking it. Set you down here. I mean, I knew that I was going to when I gave it a second chance. The last time, like I said, I tried. I just wasn't in the mood. Like, I straight up just wasn't in the headspace for that kind of story setup. The one where, like, he's trying to... He's trying to make her think he's setting her up with someone else, but really he's trying to make sure that his brother doesn't end up with her because the setup of this series is like the Duke of Marwick has done something bad. He's considered the mad Duke. He's done something to make the bare knuckle bastards upset. And like, I know what it is because I, when Daring and the Duke came out, I like, no, but I don't know like how it all happened. Or what's going on so like I said I am like two-thirds of the way into it we're finally getting to some of the first really spicy stuff but I mean Sarah McLean just writes a real spicy novel guys like she really does make the heat and the tension just so good so even though we're two-thirds in and all there's been is like some kissing so far Number one, it's a historical romance, so I'm a little bit used to that prolonged, you know, we're waiting a little while till sexy time. I'm just used to it. It's cool. It's fine. It's not my favorite, but she does it so good that I don't notice that it's not there until I'm like, oh yeah, this is the first time that they've kissed because she writes these heroes that are just, I know my camera work is all over the fucking place, sorry. She writes these heroes that are just obsessed with their women. And so by the time they're actually like doing something, you're like, oh, I thought we were doing this already. <laughs> so Devil, I really like him. I, obviously he has some nefarious plans for her. But he's already feeling the guilt of it, you know. It's a thing. Yeah, I don't know. It's so hard. I'm really liking it. We're finally getting to some steam, so I'm ready to dive into that. Uh, but I'm going to eat some lunch and watch some booktube. Um, yeah. And then I'm going to keep hitting it because I haven't had super successful work days the last couple days. And so I need to catch up on some stuff. Um, I had a tiny, it was a dermatology procedure. So think about what that means. I had a little spot removed. But it gave me a little bit of pain, and so I ended up, like, taking a nap. <laughs> I told my boss what had happened. She's like, oh, don't worry. Just have a relaxing day. But the thing is, I also had a migraine one day last week, which just wipes me out for a whole day when I have one of those. So I just need to catch up. And plus, we have Christmas next week, so then I'll be gone for a couple days. But it's cool. It's going to be good. So anyway... Yeah, that, that's it for this update. I don't want these to be too terribly long since I'm planning to have all three books in this update. So I'll probably now like update you when I finish this one. So. Hello. So here we go. One of these clips, right? So I finished The Wicked and the Wall or Wicked and the Wallflower. Ooh. 
and I gave it five stars. I think enjoyment level is probably 4.5 because they're, um, but I don't know. See, the thing is why I'm giving it five star is that she so well has set up so many characters in that book. Like, I just can tell just from the parts that I've heard about the series how much is set up in this book. And it did read really easily. You know, I felt like I always wanted to keep picking it up. I read it within like 24 hours that's always a really good sign for me um that even in audiobook form if I am always want to go back to it and I'm really drawn to it it's a good read so I gave it a five star on goodreads I'm gonna give it about a 4.5 star as my like rating but I rounded up to a five because it was pretty great um now I think that I'm going to take a bath. I can't decide. There is a another book that I'm trying to finish right now, but I did dive right into Brazen and the Beast. I'm only 30 pages into it, so we're just getting started. I know this is most of my friends' favorite one in the series. I mean, a lot of them like the third one, too. I mean, everyone just loves the series as a whole, right? So we are splitting hairs here for what the fave is, but I know that everybody looks, she's gorgeous, she's got the big boobs, she's got the thick thighs, look at those thighs, mm. and she's a woman who knows what she wants, and so we meet her when she's on her way to the bordello, the bordello that belongs to Grace, who is in hiding right now because Ewan is trying to find her, and we all are mad at Ewan right now because he's a dick. Um... I, yeah, I'm super excited. This one starts off really fun. She's on her way to a bordella to lose her virginity so that her father will stop, like, trying to match her with someone, which is just interesting because she wants her own business. And then we're told that her um, plans are going to kind of, like, contradict what Ewan needs. So there'll be some, like, tension there maybe or something. I'm not sure. Um... But yeah, I am going to take a bubble bath and relax. I'm finishing a different book right now, but then I usually put on an audiobook while I'm like shaving my legs and all that fun stuff. <laughs> so in the bath, I'll probably read my Kindle, but then I'll be listening to this again. And I had a feeling that I would want to just keep pushing through all of them, which is what I'm going to do because I have the rest of the year to just do whatever the hell I want. I've read all the books I like had to read. Um, and yeah, but I mean, it's going great. Really enjoyed the first one. And I can tell why people just get sucked into this series. I still, I will say that this is the book. Brazen and the Beast is the one that Crystal like promised me that it will get as steamy as I want it to be. Because one of my quote unquote like gripes with Sarah McLean is that the first trilo the first series of hers that I read, she promised me a lot of steam just in like how the sexual tension is set up. But then there would always be one sex scene and then the heroine finds out that the hero has betrayed her or something like that. And it happened in every book. And what happened in Wicked and the Wallflower? There's these great sexual tension. There's a, some kissing scenes that are really great. And then they finally have a sex scene. And then the heroine finds out that the hero betrayed her. And I know that that is just a trope of book. Like, that's how it's set up. But I'm hopeful that in this one there will be some multiple action scenes. Because I think there's supposed to be some steaminess, like, up at the front of this one. Just because of what her plans for herself are. So I hope that's true. And I know, I know I always sound kind of like weird when I say that, but I just always feel a little let down when I'm promised so much sexual tension and then it's one time and then the heroine finds out the hero is horrible, like every time. And so having read five of her books now and it happens in every single one, it's more so too that I want things to be like shaken up a little bit. That's that's more of what this comes from is that I want some variety, right? That's what I want. So, anyway, well, also that noise you were hearing is I listened to, 
I like um, the Yule Log tracks, but I also like rain noises or storm noises. So I either listen to winter storms or like storms while I do it. So anyway, peace out. Guys, the frizzy hair game is real. It's really real. It's a thing, but we are working with it, okay? It's a no makeup day, so that's how it is. First off, I gotta show off my shirt. My friend Carrie made this for me. It says, it, the font is kind of hard to read, so I get it, but it says, that's what I, that's, wait, what does it say? That's what I'm here for, ruining TBRs since 2018. And then it says me, because I said that. So after the workout, I have cleaned up and I had to put it on. And if it's perfect, it's super soft and gorgeous. Carrie, I am just so honored, it's beautiful. So we're update, we're here for an update for Brazen and the Beast, it's happening. I'm 170, or no, 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 120 pages in. It's fantastic, I am loving it, it's great. I, Crystal promised me the steam would escalate and it's happening, the steam is escalating and I love it. I love how obsessed Beast is with her and I love how like, well, Brazen, I mean that's literally, that's literally what it's called. I love how brazen Hattie is, and I love the year of Hattie. I mean, I understand the hashtag now because everyone is, like, bombarding me with it, and I adore it. It's fantastic. I'm having such a good time reading, listening to it. I've mostly been listening to it. Um, I listened to it a little bit during the work today. My The problem, I didn't listen to it as much today because number one, I had a lot of meetings to go to and I can't really get away with listening to it during meetings. Um, and number two, I finally joined the Smart Women Read Romance Patreon because why haven't I been a part of it? I don't know. Um, and there's a backlist of like patron only podcasts and stuff that I'm listening to and I'm just binging them because I love Julia and Justin. I love listening to them talk. I love listening to smart women talk about romance. So again, why didn't I join this before? Not sure. Um, after the gym, I needed to pick up a bunch of presents because that time has come. I don't know how that time has come or what has taken me so long to start buying. Usually I am much better than this, like much better than that. Um... But yeah, it's a thing. So, yeah, it happened. I'm binging them. It's going great. I don't feel bad. But I definitely will listen to more of this tonight. I am like a third of the way through it. And it's fantastic. I'm loving it. I probably will end up getting through all three of these pretty quickly. Um, but the main plan tonight, I'm making some dinner. And I'm going to watch some booktube. And then... I usually listen to a book while I play some games on my phone. Like, I'll listen to a book for, like, an hour while I, like, do all my games. And then I am in, you know, non this. I just started reading Wolf Gone Wild by Juliet Cross. Also, Smart Women Read Romance. And it is just a delight. Like, also, I love self-published books. Look at how beautiful this cover is and, like, the details in it. It's so pretty. I love it. So... Anyway, it's happening. So, anyway, that's enough of this clip. I don't know what's happening anymore. I got a drink. I'm actually having some coffee. I know I seem super hyper, but it's mostly because I needed to use the rest of my milk because it was about to go bad, and I bought some new milk. So I made an iced cafe latte with the rest of my milk. <laughs> Normally, well... Coffee doesn't, caffeine doesn't super affect me unless I, like, don't have anything in my stomach, which actually could be what's happening right now because my dinner is cooking. <laughs> Can't you tell, guys? Ah, wow. Nope, just kidding. We're fine. Um, yeah, that's enough. I'll check back in with you when I've made some more progress, and I hope they do the dirty real soon because I really want a book where we are consistently having relationship, but it's good other end of the couch tonight oh my word it's like looking at my face makes me yawn don't know why this is the thing um i'm just about to be finished with brazen and the beast and i understand the hype 
feel like I haven't shown proper enthusiasm in this vlog. And to be fair, a lot of the times I've been recording clips, it's been because, like, I'm tired. It's not because I'm not enjoying them. And when I do a wrap-up of this vlog, like, at the end, I will gush appropriately for you fans. I promise. Because I get it. I get why this series is amazing. I knew that I would love it. I love Sarah McLean. She makes me very happy. And I really, really love this book. Hattie is everything I was promised. Beast is delightful and growly and delicious. And I get it, okay? Like, I get it. It is a thing. So, yeah. I am definitely downloading Daring in the Duke. We'll probably listen to that tomorrow at work because, I mean, I'm, like, done with this. And I only have 15 minutes left, so, like, I know what the conclusion of this is already. And I just wanted to film this before I went to bed because I'm going to listen to the last 20 minutes of it, like, in my bed after I, like, am brushed and, like, ready for sleep. But I... I'm loving this series and I can't wait to know the full story of Ewan. So I have actually heard the first chapter before because I listened to the Faded Mates podcast and when the book came out, there was a free. And so I like know a little bit and obviously we've heard one side of it. I don't know where Grace is. I have a feeling she hasn't been gone the whole time. Like, there's something, there's some things about Grace that, like, remind me of, um, the last series that I just listened to, um, which was the Rules of the Scoundrels, where there's another character that has, like, multiple guises throughout that series, and I have a feeling that just because we haven't been seeing Grace, that that doesn't mean that she's gone. So I'll be interested to see if I was right about some of those situations. Also, this book did get sexier like I wanted to. I listened to the masked scene where he like, she literally ties him to the mask, uses her not, I can't stop yawning, uses her map time not tying skills and pleasures him and then they pleasure each other and it's great like it's it's real good stuff it's real good stuff I'm gonna stop now I'm tired and I'm loving this series I am I'm just not showing proper enthusiasm and I'm sorry I will when I wrap it all up I promise there's a gush coming when I finish and I'm bright and shiny and stuff. So it'll happen. Hello. So it happened. I finished it last night. It was so good. I loved it. I love Hattie. I love Beast. He is delicious growly man. I love him so much. Oh my gosh. Sorry. I'm all over the place. I immediately this morning started Daring in the Duke. It's happening. Things are going down. I love Grace so much. I love her so much. And Ewan, I'm ready for it. I love a villain turnaround. I love when we when we think we've seen them go too far and they can't come back and then they do. And I love it. I love when they come back. It's fantastic. So I'm very excited about it. Excited to see what, how this goes down. Like, I know bits and pieces just from what my friends have said. I know a lot of my friends cried. I'm definitely going to cry. I know it. Um, I'll probably be listening to this. Like, I'll probably get through the whole thing today because it's a thing. Um, for the weekend, I have plans for a different reading blog too, which it's fine if it overlaps with this one, but I'd prefer to just like finish this and be done so that I I'm not, like, torn between two stories, right? Which usually doesn't happen, but the level of groundwork laid for this one, I just know that it could be a thing. 
Anyway, what I have to do right now is I'm going to take this with the listen to me. I need to go pick up a couple packages because for some reason, the post office will leave my packages, but UPS decides that they can't leave it here, even though I always say with my packages, you can leave it because I live in a really safe apartment. I know most of my neighbors. Nobody steals stuff here. And I always say, if someone was going to steal my book, have at it. I'm happy to pass on my naughty little books to you if that's what you want, right? But it's just annoying because literally yesterday I was home all day except for a half an hour where I went and dropped off a package and then picked up some dinner. And that's when they came. Literally, I walked, I got in my car and was driving away and I got an alert that they couldn't reach me. And I'm like, are you, are we doing this? Like, are we really doing this? Is this a thing? It was annoying. So whatever. I am doing a present wrapping live show tomorrow. Um, we're going to do like holiday productivity sprints to so just hang out in the morning. Um, so that being said, I have a couple more gifts that I have to purchase. Just a couple. So I want to do that. And then, yeah, that's my plan. Sorry, my brain just kind of went whoop and I don't know what happened. But yeah, I need to grab a couple more gifts and then I'll be ready for wrapping tomorrow. So since I need to leave the house once, I figure I'll just do all of it at once because I just want to get it done. Also, my work they are handing out little presents at lunchtime today. So I'm going to get my errands done and then swing by. They're doing like a drive up where we signed up ahead of time. And then they're going to like drop off the goodies with us when we drive through. So it's going to be fun. But anyway, and then I'll probably film a couple things today too. My favorite video of the year, my favorite, it is my favorite video of the year, but my favorite books of the year video also just went up and that was really fun. I had a really good response from that. So I'm excited, but yeah, gonna go get stuff done and listen to Daring in the Duke because I am so ready for it. I love Grace and I love Ewan and I'm ready to know what everything really happened and why, because obviously there's going to be a turn for him. Like there's no way that it all happened the way that we think it did because he just wouldn't be redeemable. And I know a lot of people feel that he did get redeemed pretty well. So there has to be something. And I'm really interested to see what it is and go with it. It's going to be great. So dun, 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 back on the couch again. This is what reading vlogs are like, guys, because I do the reading on my couch. I did a really bad job dyeing my hair this time. Like I missed stuff and that is frustrating but whatever guys things are good I'm at about the 50% point of this I want to finish this tonight but there's also some other books I really want to read so I might it's so good god this book is so good I don't know what it is they're all written in this really like beautiful style that Sarah has where like there's so many layers to each scene. Like there's the scene that's happening and then there's the memories that the characters are having while it's happening. And then there's the like underlying tension that's happening. And it's just all built up to this book and it's so great. So the part I'm at right now is he's just spent some time like in, he's in the rookery right now and he was like hauling the ice and then he was in a fight with the pair of like Irish brothers and now he's helping the washer women with their washing <laughs> and Grace is just like get the fuck out of here I don't want to be around you because I'm having all these feelings and he's just trying to make up for it and he hasn't said a lot about it yet but I have a feeling because he knows that they're not ready to listen you know like they've made him the enemy and that's fine because he did make some tough choices, right? He made some tough choices. But as I suspected, it was either either he make it look like he was going to kill them and then kill the Duke. 
or the Duke would have killed them all, right? And just had it as a wash. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I love you and I love a guy like him. I love someone who's messed up and I love a hero who's like willing to be made a villain. Um, it just reminds me of the quote that the Darkling says in um, Shadow and Bone where he's like, fine, make me your villain. And granted, that's a completely different context and like that dude actually is a villain. Ewan, I feel like he's chosen to become the villain to save them all. And it's one of those cases too where like the really bad things that he did, like in the last two books, he did those because he felt betrayed by his brothers. Like they've been telling him that she was dead this whole time. And so for me, that recontextualizes the things that he did. He didn't mean to hurt any of the women. Like Hattie was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And, you know, they're not going to believe the best out of him. But to me, it was always clear he knew that she wasn't dead. He was like, oh my God, you guys have lied to me this whole time. And a lot of the mean things, the mean things, like he's able, a lot of the evil that he's done he did for revenge for someone who's still alive so yes he has some groveling to do but I think when it all comes to light that he won't have as much groveling to do as we'd think right because what else what was supposed to happen granted we could have been like oh well he they could have been in on the plan but they were children to a degree right so when you're a kid and you have to make this decision of how to save your family, maybe you're not going to think about the most diabolical way to usurp the Duke, who's also really smart. Like there's a quote that, which I really love that Sarah put it in there because, right, we talk about having dumb villains sometimes, which can especially happen in romance novels because, you know, sometimes the authors, they're romance authors, not like action authors or whatever. And... Um, she says she's like, so often really smart goes with really evil. And that was something that Ewan felt about the Duke, that he wasn't a stupid guy. He had put Ewan in this place where it was do or die or do or I will kill, you know? So I really emphasize with Ewan and he does have some groveling to do. And I think we're getting to where he's really starting to do it. But also, I don't think he has as much groveling. Because someone said, like, they felt like his grovel wasn't good enough. and But most of my friends say they think the grovel is good. And me reading this, I feel like there's some groveling to be done. But it's a little bit on both sides. Because these, these boys and her, like, they grew up together. And they had this ride or die mentality. And then they just believed the worst of him. You know? Like, they didn't, but they believed that he was snapped and that he wanted it for the money. Um, so, I don't know. That's my take. Like, that's me diving into it is that there is some forgiveness that's going to need to happen, like, all the way around this circle, right? Because Ewan is who we've made the villain. Fine. Make me your villain. And he has wronged Grace the most, as we say, but also she believed it. You know, it's one of those, I love that quandary in really rom in really dramatic romantic stories when we're like, but you believed the worst of me. And so that makes me a little angry too. So yeah, I'm really liking it. And I'll either finish it tonight because I might take a bath and drink some wine and listen to it. But there's also a couple other books that are really calling to me. And since I can binge tonight, because I can stay out pretty late, I might want to read those. And then tomorrow while I'm wrapping presents, uh, I'm going to do a live show wrapping presents. I will probably like listen to this while I'm doing that. So, yep. It's going good though. I, I'm the third book already <laughs> this week. It was really fun. Really good. Hey y'all. So we haven't done a clip in my car in a long time. I totally forgot that there was a new bookstore opening in my town today which is really exciting number one that it's able to open during COVID times and number two that there will be more options <laughs> for used books in my town because right now I mean you know I find stuff but the closest one with the most books is quite a ways away from me and so I only really go to it when I go home to see my family 
And then there's another one that's a really small bookstore, which I love, but it usually doesn't have a lot of options for me, so I can only go to it every few months until the inventory has been switched through. So this one going up, it's called Ferguson um, Books and something, and they have a lot of locations in North Dakota, where I live, <laughs> and they're opening today at 10 a.m. Now, I have a live show at 11.30, but it's like 9.40 right now, and I was like, well, if I'm there and I'm there at open, I just really wanna look around and do it, and I'm too impatient to wait till later. <laughs> so I'm just gonna scope it out, because I know that this is one where you can do trade credit at, and you can actually get cash back for like DVDs, videos, and books and stuff so i just kind of want to scope it out and see what they have what they offer and see if it's a place that i want to bring my books to to get credit for i'm pretty sure that it will but i just want to go check it out and see so i was like if i go where i have a time limit it might be a good thing for me and since i'm already in the middle of filming an sj or sjm no an sm vlog sarah mclean i thought i'd bring you guys because i'm obviously going to be looking for some historicals um i haven't done my step back saturday for the day yet so maybe i'll find one but i just want to see what they have because to have a bookstore of this size available to me would be really great so i'll try to get some footage if i can't i will come in with like the books that i bought but i need to kind of be quick and i don't know how busy they'll be because it is also like the weekend before christmas so we'll see but i was like if i'm there when they open maybe i can like get in and get out so all so right we're back at home because I walked in and immediately realized that this wasn't quite the store for me. So the thing is, is this store I guess is a new and used bookstore and they, they're a chain, but they're like a small chain. They're, they're specific to North Dakota. And so um, this had like just opened and it's a really small location. And I think that they in general are kind of like a half price books, um, but for our area maybe. Um, and so they had like nothing for mass markets yet, um, which was a little disappointing, but like, I get it. Um, and I, and the lady was like, tell me what kind of books that you like, and I can get them from the other stores. Like I can stock this based on what they have as well. So I was like, okay, well, I really like mass market paperbacks, specifically historical romance because they didn't have any of that at all. But they, and they also had like some new stuff though. So I still ended up buying a few things. I'll show you what I got. Um, these are not from that store because after I went to this store, um, I went to my favorite used bookstore that has all the romances I love. And I spent the same amount of money and got four times the amount of books that I did. Um, and that one's run by, I mean, they're both home owned businesses, like they're small businesses. So I still want to support them. And also I told the lady who, who owns this one, I was like, you know, I have a lot of books that I can bring in to you that are like what I like, you know? And she's like, we would absolutely love that because they have a lot of room still and there just wasn't much going on. So what I ended up buying is I ended up buying, they actually had a self-published one there. So they had Annika Martin and they had Most Eligible Billionaire. So I haven't read any of her like romantic comedies yet. I've only read her one of her mafia books, which is obviously a lot darker. But I love Annika because she is a Minnesota author. Um, her other name is also Carolyn Crane. And so, yeah, she's the one who has the Dangerous Royal series, which is the, the Dark Mafia Prince is one of those. But I was like, ooh, there's a romance. There was not many romance. Again, they had a lot of YA new, new fiction, and then they had one little section, although there's a lot of room to fill it. So it's opening weekend, and so she's counting on a lot of people bringing books in. And like I said in the clip before, I wanted to check them out before I brought books because I'll tell you, I don't want too much there. But they do have this deal where the mass market paperbacks, if you buy four, you get two free. And they're only $2.99 as it is. So that's a pretty good deal. And then if you buy a new book, you get a used book for free. So I bought this one and I got one for free. So I ended up buying a Linda Lale Miller. I'm not super interested in hers. But I was like, I'll buy a cowboy romance. That's cool. And then what they did have is they had five of the Patricia B Briggs books. And I have heard pretty okay things about this series. So I figured I'd grab it. I believe Moon Called is the first one. Um, 
I haven't been in a paranormal mood in like a little while. I went through a big phase earlier this fall, like everybody, but I did end up buying five of these just because I wanted to support them. And so this book, this book was $13 and then I got one free for that and I bought four and got one free. So I paid for these six books, I paid like $25, which isn't horrible. Like I ain't, I ain't mad at it. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. Um, but I probably wouldn't have bought these Patricia Briggs if they weren't on sale like that. So it's a good buy. And I like that there was a self-published like local-ish author because Minnesota and North Dakota are close. But then, like I said, since that only took like I was literally only there 10 minutes because as soon as I walked in, I was like, this place is not for me. So I moved on. But then I went um, to my favorite, to my favorite place. And I went um, and grabbed a bunch of historicals. So I ended up finding like, I found another copy of Captive Bride, which is great um, because this one, it's still in really good condition, although um, this one has like a name inside of it, but the, which I don't mind for my personal use. I um, mean, this one um, is a first printing as well. So I'm going to start to put together another box of Joanna Lindsay to sell on my eBay. Um, but then what else? I found this one is another one that has peacock feathers on it. Um, and I found one that was actually on my Amazon wish list. I'm not showing all of these on this one just because I'm going to do a haul soon. But anyway, so I supported two local bookstores together and I felt really good. I'll show you this one, guys, because I'm going to put this on Step Back Saturday right now. He's giving her a fucking foot rub. Isn't that bonkers? That's bonkers. I love it. I love it. This one isn't even a historical. This is set. Wait, yes it is. It's a New York historical. Oh my gosh, this is set in 1892 New York. That is fucking awesome. Love it. And then here's one more I'll show you. Catherine Sutcliffe. Look at the front. All really, really pretty. And then this, guys. Oh my God. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. That dress. So anyway, I still had a good time, but that bookshop, until they start to get some more inventory in, they're just not going to be my jam, which is sad, but I'm still happy there's another bookstore and they're brand new and there's a lot of chances. But anyway, back to this. We, I am... Woo! I am this far into it, so I'm definitely going to finish it today. Um, I The next clip I'll probably wrap up all three and I'll really go in depth about how I felt about each of them. Um, I had a really great time. I mean, these books are so good. Like, I understand the hype, I understand the love, and I just... I get it. And I don't know how else I can say that. I get it. So yeah, it's so good. There's like nothing else I can say yet until I'm done. But I love the longing. I love that they're just like drawn together like magnets and it's just ping pong you back and forth and it's amazing. So yeah, I'm going to keep watching Crystal's vlog. I was going to watch the whole thing before I left, but it was a 40 minute one today. Her vlogmas was long and so I only made it halfway through and then I was like I gotta go get some stuff done because the live show is in half an hour so it's gonna be great I'm excited I have hiccups right now I'm sorry all right peace out and we'll be back later to wrap this up all right friends it's time to wrap up this trilogy so this reading vlog has been quite the ride it has been so much fun to do it I oh my word I loved all the couples so much. I actually finished Daring in the Duke last night um, and I just wasn't prepared to talk about it yet, okay? Like I, I finished it and then I just had to sit with it because it is everything people like promised me that it would be. And 
this trilogy, I was talking with Crystal about it last night, and I would also say that like you need you need to read this trilogy in order. You can't just jump in wherever you want, specifically with this book. And I'm really glad that I didn't skip the first book either because I think I've shared this. I tried reading The Wicked and the Wallflower two or three different times and I kept getting caught up in the first couple chapters. And so when I went to do the series this time, I got it on audio because this actually happens with historical romances a lot. I read 90% of my historical romances these days with audiobooks. So that's why some take me longer to get to if they don't have an audiobook. I'm not going to hold this the whole time because we know what I'm talking about. But it just, it just wasn't working for me. But I knew that I really liked this narrator and I really wanted to give it a go. So yeah, anyway, that stuff's already been said. But anyway, I'm really glad that I didn't skip ahead or try to start with Brazen and the Beast because though series these days are supposed to be seen as like especially historical romance when they're about different couples you're supposed to be able to jump in wherever you want and sometimes you have an author like Sarah McLean who's writing such a good story that you can't do she was building something with these couples and with each story and if you had jumped in with the third one, like some people have, and I'm sure like it's still a well-written book, so you could like it, but the layers to Ewan and the layers to Grace and Ewan's story, there are such vital pieces of it in other parts of the story that I don't know how you could be satisfied with Daring the Duke if you just read that book, okay? So yeah I still it's hard to gush about it properly and I know in my lap the I believe it's the last clip or the one before where I really go into about how I felt about Ewan and I feel like that continued on I feel that Ewan is one of the best historical romance heroes that I've ever read um it doesn't mean that he's one of my favorites because, I mean, he doesn't compare to Ian McKenzie or, you know, some of them, but he's that kind of hero that he's seen as a villain, he's seen as an anti-hero, and he was a hero all along. All of the things that he did, and I love that wit and, uh, wit and devil actually say this to Grace. They say to her, like, you know what, if I had been in his position and, you know, I had thought that you guys had let my love die, like, I would have retaliated the same way. And the deaths and the pain that is caused by Ewan, he tries to make amends for. He did not mean for collateral damage to happen. And when he tried to kill Wit and Devil, he was doing it out of pain. He was a wounded animal. And you could see it in how he acted before. And then once he knows that Grace is alive and he comes back to town later on, he's still very determined, but he has hope again. He has hope that he can win her back, that he can try to get her. And he's not just loving a ghost, which is what he felt he was doing and why he was seen as being mad because the love of his life was gone. And he sacrificed for 20 years and to think that he had done that all for naught, well, of course he was going to be angry. And so that's, for me, what was so beautifully written about this book. I, Grace wasn't my favorite protagonist. Um, I think she was a little too stuck in her ways for me. Um, I do like that, you know, in classic romance fashion, like this isn't just a Sarah McLean thing, that even though she rejected Ewan in the moment... He was always planning to burn it all down, you know, and I, and I understand, I know it's like burn down the patriarchy, we get it. But I was saying this to Crystal, the only change that I would have liked is because he was always planning to burn that down for her. I wish that she had accepted him first and that he knew it because we can split hairs and we can say, you know, wit and devil and her were already on their way before they knew what he was doing. And that's fine. But I loved Ewan and I think he deserved to know that 
she was worth it or that he was worth it because this book gets so focused on like we have to prove that the women are worth it and Ewan made a big sacrifice like Grace is being a queen in Covent Garden all this time you know it's not that her life was perfect or anything but I just feel that way and I think that if like men and women are wanting to be equal like I think the women need to bend sometimes too and that's there's just all the things that can come from it it's a romance novel I was extremely satisfied with it. I think Ewan gets the happily ever after that he wants. I loved that we burned it all down and that he could just be who he wanted to be in Covent Garden with her and let the crown have the dukedom back. Like that was great. It was great. I just wanted Ewan to know that she picked him and then he still was going to burn it down. You know, like when he says, I'll make you a duchess. I think he was already planning to burn it down. I do. But he was giving her the option to be the Duchess or not, you know, because he's like, I'll give it all up. I'll do what do you need? Like he asked her, he asked her again, and again, what do you need? And she told him and he was like, okay, but like, I'll make you a Duchess and you'll have all this power. And she's like, that's not what I want. And so what did he do? Even after she rejected him, he was still going to burn it down. And then he was going to go back to her again. Right. And she had changed her mind and was on her way to him anyway. And if they hadn't been on their way there, he would have died probably. But I don't know. It was beautiful. I'm just bitching about the little stuff. You know me. This was a really great um, reading experience. I love like these were 4.5 stars and the, this was both five stars for me. Um, Hattie is still my favorite protagonist. But Ewan is probably my favorite hero. Um, and Daring in the Duke was my favorite book just for how it all accumulated together. Um, so I'm so happy I read this. I can't wait to continue reading more Sarah McLean. Um, she definitely was worth the time. And it's only when an author writes such a brilliant story that we're able to critique it in any way, right? Because it's so well put together, so well written that I can even pick apart those things. So thank you so much for watching this. This was quite an experience. Um, I have more of these kind of vlogs planned for 2021. Um, and I hope that you will stick around for it. So make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you want more content. Um, 2021 will still be dark romance and historical romance focused. And I just can't wait to see what that year brings us. So thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Bye.